Let me talk about problem solving. A lot of people, when they get problems, want to avoid them, they sidestep them. Oh, big problem, I just can't handle this, I can't deal with this. Actually, one of the skills that we all need to develop, I think, more of is to face up to problems, to deal with them, not to avoid them. In fact, to invite problems, to look for them, because problems produce solutions. And in the process of solving problems, even when you take a few false steps and, and, and some trial and error, the fact is you learn things and you stretch yourself and you, and you actually come up with some innovative things you hadn't even thought of before. Dan Sullivan is an entrepreneurial mentor in Toronto. He mentors entrepreneurs. And one of his quotes, which I thought was brilliant, he said, some of the best opportunities we get in life come to us cleverly disguised as problems. And so problems should be seen for the learning possibility, for the challenge, for the excitement, but also for the fact that they, they stimulate us, they keep us sharp, they keep our edges uh, in, in tune, and uh, problems are really a wonderful way of, of, of growing and learning. Now, a lot of times, problem solving involves creativity and innovation and new ways of thinking and resourcefulness, all of these phrases that are very important in managing change, very important in succeeding in business. Um, and actually, I, I, I use in one of my seminars a far side, car, far side cartoon by Gary Larson that to me is the, the epitome of creativity in the sense of being um, proactive, anticipating things, thinking ahead of where everybody else is. And this is a cartoon showing a caveman carving a rudimentary wheel out of stone. You know, pretty progressive, a wheel, nobody, you know, that's, that's a first. But the guy who was really creative was the guy with him in the picture. He is very busily carving away at stone also, but he's carving a parking meter. <laughs> now that's the kind of creativity we're talking about. <laughs> problem solving. One of, my, one of my favorite stories about problem solving is about a school teacher. This, this, is, this is how, how, you know, just these kinds of stories can be really helpful. This is a teacher who had a student who was, uh, you know, very energi energetic. So this is a grade seven or eight, something like that. But this guy was, was really just full of beans all the time, but he was a big show off. He was always acting out and he was always, always uh, uh, trying to be on stage. And he was just irrepressible. He was very funny, but he was very disruptive. And finally, she decided, she had tried everything with this kid. You know, I mean, from threats to punishment to calling him into the office to this and that. Nothing seemed to work. And finally, she called him aside. And I thought this was a really clever uh, solution. She said to him, I'm gonna make you a deal. If you can behave yourself for the entire day, I will give you the last 15 minutes of class time to stand up in front of the class and do whatever you want. You can entertain them, you can goof around, funny faces, I don't care. But you have to behave all day, otherwise you don't get the 15 minutes. Is that a deal? And he said, you bet. So what happened is that he started on a regular basis behaving himself very well and having the last 15 minutes of the day to entertain his classmates. Now this was a classical, to me, win-win-win solution. First of all, she got a cooperative kid and a much more disciplined class for the day. The kid got 15 minutes of airtime every afternoon to do his thing, and the class won because they got 15 minutes of terrific entertainment at the end of every day to send them off. So there weren't any losers in this whole thing. Now, that was a really creative piece of problem solving. I was also impressed when I read the story um, uh, not only about the teacher's creativity, but also the fact that she had a pretty good eye for talent. Because that student went on to become a very famous movie star. Anyone know who it is? Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. From this area. Grew up in Scarborough and Aldershaw. But those are the kinds of things that can happen if we, if we just sort of widen our perspective and use our creativity to solve problems. I now want to talk for a couple of minutes about balance and stability. Now, balance is, is, is something that I, has become one of the buzzwords of our time, but I think it's a very important word because life is speeding up and the fact is that most of us are not going to be able to keep up with the really rapid pace. And I think this is a time when we need to actually start checking off some things for ourselves and deciding what speed we're going to run at 
all the time. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't run and slow down and run and slow down, but the idea of trying to run at super speed all the time, it's like running a marathon by sprinting. Nobody can do it. And so we need to, in a sense, have a core of, of, of balance and stability in our lives. Now, balance prevents burnout. That's one of the important things about balance. It also enhances resilience because it allows us, among other things, to regenerate our energy. And thirdly, balance enriches our lives. And so I think it's an important thing to look at in terms of how we live our lives. And I'm thinking of people, you know, workaholics and, and, and type A's who are just always running and, and always filling in the spaces and the time. You know, type A people, if they've, if they've got any spare time at all, they use it. If they have to leave for a meeting at 20 to 2 and they're ready at 1.30, they don't leave at 1.30. Because, you know, what if they get there early, right? So what happens is that they start to find something to do. Suddenly they look down at their watch. It's a quarter to two. Now they move into type A travel mode, right? <laughs> they filled in all these spaces. So now they get into the left lane of the highway, right, driving above the speed limit. If anybody slows them down, they, get, they, they weave lanes, they honk, they get impatient, they start swearing, whatever. I, there's, a, there's a Herman cartoon that I love. This is, a, this is a, another aspect of type A travel mode. This shows a taxi, and the guy is getting into the driver's side of the taxi. The driver's kind of looking at him. He says, I've got to be at the airport in three minutes. I'm driving. <laughs> Can you relate? You know, these people... These are people who walk fast, they talk fast, they, 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 in fact, if you're a slow talker, they'll finish sentences for you, you know? <laughs> and they sort of do it like this. They, they go, uh-huh, yeah, right, while you're talking. You know, and you think, oh, they're agreeing with me, that's great. They're not agreeing with you. They're pacing you. <laughs> they're trying to get you to finish so that they can have the floor. And once they've got the floor, they don't relinquish it, right? These are the people, I, I heard a definition of a, of, of a conversation with type A people. It's a competitive exercise in which the first person to draw a breath is declared the listener. <laughs> there's, a, there's a kissing cousin to the type A and that's the type E person. This is a person who tries to be everything to everybody. Very difficult to do. Um, now, this used to be called the superwoman syndrome, but this is not gender specific. Men do this too. But I'm going to illustrate it with a card that happens to be for women. It's a Mother's Day card that I found several years ago, decided not to give it to anyone and just keep using it. Um, <laughs> and this is a card filled with cartoons, and it's, the text down the middle says, This is Jane. Jane has a family. Jane has a job. And yet dinner is always ready for her children. Jane's house is always spotless. Her clothes are always cleaned and pressed. Her yard is immaculate. And Jane still manages to have time for herself. And you open up and says, Jane kind of makes you want to barf, doesn't she? <laughs> we all know some Janes. There are actually a few talented people on the planet who can pull this off, but for most of us, it's a very daunting model and one we shouldn't even be trying to catch up with. There's an, an expression that standards are set by the swiftest. So if you know someone who can do that, you feel you should be able to do it too. We really need to settle back and decide what kind of life we want to lead. And I think balance in this sense includes things like downtime, quiet time, thinking time, decompression time. Time for ourselves, time for our families, time for other interests. That's the kind of balance I'm talking about. And not always being on the fast track. 